as it is any provincial politician. The federal government has the power to stop 413 as long as it does its job by refusing permission to destroy endangered species habitat. The federal government has the power to stop 413 by requiring a new federal impact assessment. They've already done the work of fixing the legislation so they have that power again. And so we're really glad that Councillor Mike Cole is right here and we are counting on him to tell his friends in the Liberal Caucus federally that it's their job to stop 413. It's their job to require a fresh federal impact assessment of 413. It is their job to use their power to protect the endangered species along the route for Highway 413, and that's why it's so great to have someone like Councillor Cole here with influence in those sectors to take the stand with us to give voice, to, to help us put that pressure on the federal government as well as the provincial government to do their jobs here. I know I, I don't know if you did want to speak, but if you do want to speak, that's great too. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I know many of you are too young to know but it was my legislation that created the Green Belt and, and, uh, and we did succeed in uh, protecting the Oak Ridge's moraine at the time. So that was, uh, that was something that took five years of work, but we were able to basically achieve that success because people had no idea that the headwaters of uh, Toronto's uh, water sources are in the Green Belt. So whether it's the Ganaraska, whether it's the Credit, the Humber, the Don, that's where your drinking water comes from. So if they're going to pave it with this uh, super uh, highway, not only do you end up paving it and attracting more cars, but what happens with the highway, the, the basic reason they're doing it is because the highway feeds the development beast. So, what if we're, so wherever you have roads, you're going to have massive development take place uh, that will uh, help uh, developers. But then some of the best farmland in North America will be lost forever. So once you cable farmland, it's gone forever. So in terms of uh, you know the success we achieved in creating the Green Belt, I can't remember so long ago, 2003, when we did it, the success is to speak to people directly. And one of the things that you can do that's very effective is uh, to uh, basically visit your local MPP. Doesn't matter. There's the developer's friend there, you see? Yeah. So what, what happens is that uh, even if you visit, they record that visit. And if you tell them directly, I'm here to see the MDP or talk to the staff and get other people to visit, emails don't work, sad to say. Forget emails, they don't work. You have to visit the office of your MPP in person be courteous, let them know your concerns, say you're concerned about your children, your grandchildren's ability to have fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, and clean drinking water. That's what it's all about. So that is, I think, the most effective strategy because ultimately, the pressure has to be on the architects of the highway, and that is the Ford government. And Again, they have to 
be told and informed that you do not support it and oppose it. And as you know, luckily, uh, we stopped the uh, $8 billion land giveaway. And that was a result of a couple of great journalists uh, that did that. And so then there's a police investigation now into that $8 billion giveaway. So that's why, again, visit your, ask your people across the city, across Ontario, to visit their MPP, be courteous and say, listen, I want drinking water for my children and grandchildren, I want fresh fruits and vegetables, and I don't want to lose the best farmland in North America, which will happen. So again, keep it up. You can affect change, but you've got to be targeted. And as I said, don't waste your time with emails, please. They, they all go into the junk box. Okay, so visit and spread the word. Keep to farmland, food, and deal with this oncoming climate catastrophe. This highway will feed the climate catastrophe and it will accelerate it. You don't want a catastrophic situation that's even worse than it is now when they build this highway, uh, which will again end up paving not only the highway but all the lands around it with nothing. It'll all look like a uh, moonscape. Anyways, thank you. Keep up the uh, passion. Thank you very much. Thanks again for coming by. We were expecting you, and it's always great when someone uh, comes and, and of their own accord to show up. Uh, we have been leaning on MP Marco Mendocino to do his job as well and uh, ensure that there is a renewed federal impact assessment of Highway 413 and to ensure that no permits and no designation of permission to uh, destroy endangered species habitat happens along the 413 corridor. And it's so great that we have a federal system in Canada because we are leaning on the provincial government. And unfortunately, uh, for now, they seem to be in the pockets of, of their friends. Uh, but what we hope and trust is that the same is not true with the federal government. And that's why right now we're leaning on the federal government to renew the federal impact assessment, to uh, provide a, uh, to, in, to guarantee that there will be no permission uh, granted to damage red side beach habitat. Uh, federal fish habitat is squarely within uh, fed, uh, or uh, inland fish habitat is squarely within federal responsibility. Navigable waters are within federal responsibility. And so while we are pressuring the province to change course, while we are uh, building up uh, you know, and, and leaning on uh, the opposition parties in Ontario, to lay the groundwork for that and ensure that nothing can happen in the interim. We're counting on the federal government to ensure that nothing can happen on 413. They've been doing a great job so far. They have passed uh, endangered species uh, regulations that protect the habitat of the red side base along the 413 corridor. That was it. A big, big uh, cheer for Minister Gibbon for doing that. Uh, you know, uh, whatever the other complaints may be, Minister Gibo has passed those regulations, and, and that rule, what's called the re recovery strategy for the red side days, means that the minister must pass official habitat protection orders for the 413 route by the no later than the end of January, and so that means that as long as this federal government uh, or or some government of similar mindset remains in place. Uh, in our view, there would be no legal way for Highway 413 to go ahead. Thank you. And um, the other... I just want to say, this is a fantastic turnout for what's part of a day of action all over the place. Uh, we've got actions happening in York Region and Mississauga and other places that I don't know. I want to thank the folks from Environmental Defense, from SCAN, from GASP, from TEAR, and the Greater Toronto Health Coalition for coming out today. It's very important that we're here at Robin Martin's office. I'm going to say a few things about Robin Martin. But first, I have a technical thing I have to do. Uh, 
is the MP for Eglinton Lawrence. Up until recently, she was the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Health, Sylvia Jones. And, when, and last year, when the Conservative government introduced Bill 60, which is about privatizing the health services that are uh, provided in public hospitals and sending them to private for-profit clinics, it was Robin Martin who headed up the Conservative uh, arguments in the committee that examined the legislation and it's not surprising because in 2002 2003 Robin Martin was a policy advisor at the Ministry of Health under the much reviled uh, leadership of Premier Mike Harris and during the Standing Committee on Social Policy hearings on Bill 60 which she was when she was uh, chairing for the Conservatives. She proudly spoke of her role at that time in helping to establish a private, for-profit cancer center at Sunnybrook Hospital back in 2002 under Mike Harris. What she didn't mention was that this private clinic was the subject of a special report by the provincial auditor that found that it had failed to reduce wait times, which is what they were saying they needed Bill 60 for, that it had been tendered using questionable and possibly unethical methods, that the cost to the public was approximately $500 more per procedure than in the public hospital, and it drained staff from other jurisdictions, leading to, guess what, a reduction of services. So that's 20 years of her advocating that model, and that's where we are today. Given the similarities with that experiment in 2002 and what is unfolding around the province today, it's no surprise that Robin Martin has been deployed as a key figure pushing this privatization. The issues around lack of oversight, the use of public resources for private profit, the inefficacy of such schemes in actually reducing waiting times, and the documented pattern of increased wait times for the public system as a result of draining staff resources all create a sense of deja vu and shame indeed to give a flavor of her political approach to this question i'm going to play a clip from the legislature of her response to opposition criticism of the government's proposal to privatize health care i hope this comes through properly Listening to some of the complaining going on, I get tired of listening. I get tired of listening to people trying to make a crisis and make fear in the population at a time of a pandemic even worse by using words and expressions like the worst crisis in generations and and oh my God, the government is going to privatize, trying to scare. Oh, Okay, so that is Robin Martin in full flight in the legislature, making light of the very real worries and concerns people have about the destruction of our public health care system. She does not give a shit about what happens to our public health care system. And so I just want to wrap up with today what I want to say. Number one, it's very good to be here together to say we want health care, we want public health care not green belt highways public health care not green belt highways public health care not green many other issues of course that we could reinvest in education clean water for indigenous communities there are so many things that we could be spending the money on that they're trying to waste on highway 413 and the bradford bypass robin martin is contemptuous of the very real and widespread concerns ontarians have about the wholesale drive to privatize health care. What we're seeing is possibly the largest transfer of public money into private hands in this province's history. That is what's happening with the privatization of hospital services. It's happening right now, right as we speak. And she's, she's been centrally involved. However, Robin Martin was elected in June 2018 uh, in this riding 
by a margin of 957 votes, and in the recent election in 2022, she won by 524 votes. So what we need to do, we've got a poster here that Matt mentioned, and thank you, Matt, for making this. A nice poster. This is your MPP, Eglinton Lawrence. Robin Martin puts highways before health care. Highway 413 will cost $10 billion, pave part of the green belt, and only add, uh, only reduce travel times in the GTA by 30 to 60 seconds. But Robin Martin thinks that's a better use of tax money than nurses and hospitals. Why? Because Robin Martin is a longtime advocate of private for-profit health care. She was a policy advisor under Premier Mike Harris and helped create the first for-profit cancer center in Ontario. The center was closed because it was expensive and useless, kind of like Highway 413. Call Robin Martin. We want to put these up at the end of our uh, excellent program today. So if anyone wants to stick around, we've got po uh, paste and posters. And uh, thanks everyone for coming out today. The government for a lot of different issues, and the more we can sort of get to know each other, work together, I think we'll have a lot of success because a lot of people in Ontario are mad about the same things. Nothing of environmental defense to speak about the highway, Highway 413. Hey everybody, thanks for coming out and helping to hack away at one of the Achilles heels of this despicable Highway 413 scheme. Thank you so much for coming and congratulations because six and a half years after they promised to deliver 413, the odds are really no higher than they ever were that the highway is ever going to happen. They are no closer to delivering 413 than they were six and a half years ago. And things are so bad for the Premier that the Premier's friends are starting to breathe down the Premier's neck. The sprawl developers who want taxpayer subsidies for their McMansions on the Greenbelt and the last remaining habitat of the Red Side Dace. They want a $12 billion subsidy, and they're mad that the highway hasn't come yet. The multinational construction conglomerates that want to rip us off the way they have been ripping the Ontario public off on every construction project under this government's uh, supervision. They are all breathing down his neck. And so, what has the Premier done to cover his butt? What has he done to try and get them off his back? He's resorting to mind games. So whenever, for example, I'll give a great example. When, even after months of expensive litigation by the provincial government, the federal government insisted upon a memorandum of understanding that preserved its right to designate 413 for an impact assessment, that preserved the federal right for, to stop 413 by denying endangered species permits. What did the province do? It sent Minister Sarkaria on a lying tour around uh, all of the major transit stations. He was on right before me on CP24, claiming that the MOU said completely the opposite because he can't account for like, every, the, the actual news is bad. When the federal government did what we asked and reinstated as we said they would, the Impact Assessment Act, so they can designate 413 for the Impact Assessment. What did the province do? They tried to make it a non-story. They said, oh, don't worry, we're going to get the shovels in the ground later this year. They started putting up signs, fake signs along the 413 route, saying future, future location of the 413. It's no, it's, no, it's no accident. That happened when they reinstated the Impact Assessment Act, as we'd asked them to do. And a couple of weeks ago, and this is one of the funniest ones, when the federal government did as we asked and issued a key recovery strategy for the Red Side Dace, which doesn't sound very like a big deal, it sounds like a technical thing, but it designates almost the entire route of 413 as the critical habitat of an endangered species and promises a habitat protection order that will make it illegal to build 413. What does the province do? Well, we caught them off guard when we asked about that one. 
because the answer from the Premier on that one was even more ridiculous than ever. He said, oh, habitat protection will be no big deal because uh, I've been told, and, and, and you'll laugh to hear who told him, that uh, endangered species can just hop over the highway from one side to another and it'll be fine. He implied that endangered species that live in southern Ontario can move up to the north and so that means somehow that the designation of the 413 route as critical habitat somehow isn't a big deal. Step after step, we are winning these fights against the 413 and all the Premier has are mind games. Now, the dangerous thing is that the Premier is trying to play those mind games on your federal Liberal MPs. He is trying to scam them into thinking, for example, that the public is somehow behind the 413. He is trying to scam them into thinking that a safer move would be to ignore the federal responsibilities and roll over and let 413 happen. And so, when we put out a poll, which was independently conducted, it was an Ecos Research poll, which showed there was overwhelming opposition yeah. to the actual route of 413, but something over 80% of Ontarians said that they don't want the actual 413 to be built through the green belt, through endangered species habitat, where it would actually go. What did they do? They commissioned a rigged poll, the developers did, which asked them some vague question using a name for the highway they never heard, as though it was, would you, do you like highways? And, of course, right, and, and uh, it, that was their, so they tried to pretend that the public supported and that they are pressuring the liberals right now but with these rig calls claiming that, uh, you know, because people like highways in general or because when they use a different name for the highway and don't say where it is, people are okay with it, they're okay. But we know that when you ask about Highway 413, when you say where it goes, the general public overwhelmingly opposes it. Now, I'm not able to share the figures now, but the numbers on that are starker than ever. We know that uh, if the federal liberals were to let 413 happen, this would actually be, be a politically disastrous move for them, that we see them wiped out of the city of Toronto altogether and wouldn't gain them anything even along the 413 route. We know this to be true, you know this to be true. They want you to believe that your lying eyes can't be trusted. That when you talk and your ears can't be trusted, when you talk to your friends and they agree with you uh, that 413 is idiotic, uh, that somehow there's some silent majority out there that disagrees. It's just not true. And thank you for having the guts and trusting your own reason to understand that the overwhelming view of the public is in opposition to 413. And in particular, I want to reiterate, thank you for identifying the biggest Achilles heel of the case for 413. When we ask people whether they think 413 is a good use of money, or whether they would like that money, or three quarters of it, to be dedicated to health care and education and other public services, even the overwhelming majority of people who say they think 413 is a good idea, the majority of those people say, no, we should cancel 413 and invest the money in health care and education. Woo! Woo! The majority of people who think that 413 is a good idea, even the majority of them think that it would be a better idea simply to pay the tolls of truckers to use Highway 407. Right. So the public is with you. You are not some weird group of people. You are speaking for the vast majority of your neighbors. You are just the ones who are putting the time in to manifest that view. And it's really important that you make your elected representatives understand that too. Because I guarantee you, if you look at the lobbyist registry, the federal lobbyist registry, what's happening is they are paying people day after day to request meetings with this MPP, MPs, federal MPs, to convince them that the safest move is just to go ahead with the 413 because there's $12 billion at stake for these big international conglomerates. So they go, it's worth the money to keep doing it. So it's up to you, free of charge, to remind them of the truth. 
They don't care whether the federal liberals get reelected. They're happy to see them walk into a fan. Uh, but you can speak in their interest and explain to them that the only move, the safest move, the most reliable move for them, is to do their jobs, protect the environment, and stop 413. And you can tell this MPP that no matter how much she's hoping that by def underfunding health care and squandering the money on Highway 413, uh, it is going to lead to support her agenda to privatize uh, health care. Uh, Ontarians aren't on board with it. And Ontarians are on to her. So if she wants to be reelected, then she's going to have to change her view. And the good news, folks, is that it works. We know it works. Because as strongly as this MPP and other MPPs are claiming that 413 is going to happen no matter what, no matter how confidently they're saying it now, they were speaking just as confidently about how they were going to build McMansions on the Greenbelt uh, a little over a year ago. And we all know how that went. You scared the living bejesus out of them, and they backed down! So scare the living bejesus out of Robin Martin by showing her that she cannot be re-elected unless she stops the 413. So, Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, this has been a great event. I knew a lot about Highway 413, but I didn't realize that Robin Martin has been advocating for privatized health care for 20 years. That was news to me from this collaboration with the Greater Toronto Health Coalition. And I'm going to talk to my neighbors a lot about that. The idea of a for-profit cancer center at Sunnybrook, which operated using public facilities after hours, is totally obscene. And I think that's a good thing to raise to your neighbors if you live in this riding. So I want everyone to come in. We're going to get a big group photo in front of Robin Martin's office. We also have some sidewalk chalk. We encourage you to take some sidewalk chalk. And you can write, healthcare not highways. You can write, safe public health care. You can write, stop a 413. Whatever messages you want to leave for Robin Martin in front of her office and sort of up to the corner and that back. And then also, please come and get some posters from myself or Michelle at the end, and we're going to all sort of head off in our own directions and poster up this neighborhood, because people need to know that Robin Martin is a big advocate for private health care and that she loves the Highway 413. So let's bring in our banners, and let's all gather up for some group photos. And if you have a camera and you want to post on social media, this is a great time to get a big picture of the, the big crowd that we brought out today. So thanks again, everybody, for coming. We hope you have a lovely afternoon. Uh, it, it, it's always important to find the right screw to turn. And so when you're talking to your federal liberal MP, as well as your provincial MP, it's worth noting, point out to them that Mike Cole showed up and he's with us. So why the heck aren't you? All right?